Hello beautiful people, my name is Bridget and welcome back to my channel. Hope you're having a lovely day and today's video is going to be a review of the new Ghost Face palette with Glam Light and Scream. So this is gonna be like a first impressions. We're gonna do an eye look together. I'll let you know what I'm feeling about it, you know, as we do it. Um, and today we're just gonna test out this palette. I have used it previously, but we're gonna have fun doing an eye look together. If you guys are into more Glam Light things, let me know because I know there's some more horror collections coming out and I had so much fun with the last one, the Chucky one one they did so yeah if this is kind of your vibe and you want to see more of it let me know but without any further ado let's get started because this is just such a fun thing before we get started with the look, I do wanna give a quick shout out to today's sponsor and that is Dossier. Dossier is like one of my favorite companies to work with. I wanna thank them so much for working with me again. And it's always a pleasure because you know what? I like saving money and I wanna smell good but I'm not willing to spend like 100 up to $300 at like a Sephora or a Macy's or Nordstrom somewhere like a department store on a fragrance. I can get the same high-end luxury fragrances at a fraction of the cost through Dossier and that's what I love to do. They also have their own signature scents. You can have dupes for scents you already know and love. They also have their own signature scents and just in case, you know, you're out there and you want to pick something out in person, they also have Dossier fragrances in some Walmart locations as well. So their fragrances start at only $29. They also have candles and room diffusers, great ways to get those nice scents in your home. But today I'm going to talk about two of their perfume, colognes, fragrances for your body that you can use every day and smell great at you know, a lot of money savings compared to anywhere else. So let's get started with the first one I wanna share with you. And this one is called Woody Hyacinth. I'm not good at how things are called, but Woody Hyacinth, this is a dupe for Chanel's Chance. Now, this is how much money you're saving through Dossier on this fragrance. It's a lot of money. So Dossier has clean, minimalistic packaging, something everyone can get behind. These look really nice. If you have multiple just stacked beside each other, it looks really clean and nice. Ooh, this one is, okay, so it is called Woody, but it is very woodsy. It's kind of earthy, has a little bit of a musk to it. So inspired by Chanel Chance, like I already said, there's top notes of hyacinth, lemon, pineapple, mint notes of jasmine, pink pepper, and patchouli, base notes of vanilla, vevetier, and orris. This one gives a little bit of a masculine woodsy vibe to it. And you know, as someone who wears colognes myself, you can wear this no matter your gender because... Who doesn't like like a nice woodsy, musky, manly fragrance? The other scent I wanted to share with you today is Citrus Neroli. And this one is a dupe for Tom Ford's Neroli. Now this one, it already smells straight out the box and it is so beautiful. Now this one pulls a little more masculine too. This one's a little less woodsy than the one I just smell with you. This one is like, it's a little masculine and musky, but it's so fresh. Like this one just smells so fresh. I'm not like sure what Neroli is per se. I'm not like good at ingredients and stuff, but this one is so, so beautiful. Like this one is like the best one I've smelled in quite a while. I love this. It's so fresh and airy and fragrance. So the top notes are Neroli, Bergamot, Mandarin, and Lemon. Middle notes of Orange Blossom, Jasmine, and Lavender. Base notes of Musk and Amber. That's where I'm getting that freshness from. It's like that Lemon and the Orange Blossom probably. Oh, this one's so good. Guys, this one's a really good one. Especially if you're like, I like a little masculine, but I don't want to wear something that's like cologne. This one is so perfect and in the middle. So good. And then also with the holidays coming up, it'd be a really good holiday you know, like gift giving idea as well. And then also you can check out the refusers and candles linked down below. But anyways, thank you Dossier so much for working with me. It's always a pleasure. You're saving so much money by checking them out. If you guys have checked out Dossier with my link before, let me know down below how you think, you know, how your experience has been with them. Cause I'm sure it's been great. And now let's get into the eye look. Alrighty guys, so let's go ahead and get started. I want to get full disclosure, I have already used this twice, but I feel like because I've already used it and I didn't have a chance to film those looks, I feel like I'll have a better understanding of how it is and I'll give a better review at the end for you. So the palette itself, super cool. I, I love this. I mean, the, I find that very satisfying, a little scratchiness, even though I don't like doing it, but it is satisfying when I do do it. This is so pretty. It's so pretty. Now I will say, Glam Light, you're kind of blue balling me here. You're kind of blue balling me here. They're, they previewed on their Instagram a Nightmare on Elm Street collection. And then immediately afterwards, a Friday 13th collection. Now, everything they post is about this Friday 13th collection. But like, you announced the Nightmare on Elm Street collection first. I'd rather see that first. You post Friday 13th second, and then all your posts are Friday 13th, and like, 
I'm a, I'm a huge Nightmare on Elm Street fan, not really a Friday the 13th fan. So I'd much rather see that collection. Sorry, I mm, let me know your favorite horror franchise. Mine is Saw. I know a lot of people are going to say Scream. A lot of people are going to say Scream. If you say Halloween or Friday the 13th, I just think that's kind of boring. But Nightmare on Elm Street's fun. <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street's fun. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to see when that collection comes out. I know it's going to be a lot of red and green, but I still think it's going to be cool. I can't wait to see what they did with it. But anyways, let's talk about this palette. As I have in my hand, the Ghost Face palette. Now, this palette color scheme I think is very pretty. Now, I know a lot of people are going to say a lot of their horror palettes have a similar color scheme, but horror palettes do usually have cinematically very similar color schemes. This one is much more cool compared to like their Chucky palettes, um, and it's not as dark as the Friday the 13th palette they have coming out. This one has a lot of silvers and grays in it, which I think makes a lot of sense since Ghostface is kind of a stabby guy with the, you know, stab stab kind of a stabby guy. I think this is just a really pretty color scheme and I do like a lot of the lighter mattes in here and I like the option of making it a little darker as well. Now I did use this black matte shade today for my eyebrows. I just used it on a little pencil brush to do my eyebrows because I don't buy brow products anymore so doing eyeshadow eyebrows works out perfectly. They never smudge away so there's some way to save money for you right there on makeup. Use your eyeshadow palettes as your eyebrows. <laughs> But anyways, let's dive around in. I think today I just want to do a halo look and just test out a few shades. So firstly, I'm going to prime my eyelids with the Gerard Cosmetics Clean Canvas Base. I'm going to use the color Fair today. I considered using, you know, the white one, uh, but I just don't think it's necessary. We're just going to do a halo eye. Nothing's really going to be too, like, needs to be popping, I guess, because we're not using, like, bright whites or pastels or anything. So I think this is going to be fine. Now, full disclosure, I'm not going to do... The most complex, complicated eye look today. One, because I always do looks that are easy anyone can do. And two, this eye has been giving me so many problems. Like, I have to wear makeup every day, right? But under here on my eyelids, I've just been watering to hell on the outer corner of my eye the last, like, three days. I'll even wake up and there's, like, you know, my eye was just been leaking all night. There's been watery eye even in my sleep. And all day at work yesterday, I was just like, whoop. Whoop, whoop, trying to wipe away the tears. I don't know what's going on. This eye is just really sensitive. So I'm not gonna do something super, super heavy because I know me wearing this for a while, it's gonna get messed up because my watery eye. So, you know, anyways, let's focus on the top lid today. I'm just saying, not gonna do much under here. Okay, so firstly, I'm gonna take this tiny little, tiny little packing brush. This is the Precision Firm Blender E42. It's just kind of a dense little, it is a blender, but I'm going to use it to pack on some colors. So I want to start off with the shade Ghostly Gray, which is this one. It's kind of like a bluey gray color. I'm going to tap in here on the side of the brush, pick up some pigment, and I'm going to put it on the outer and inner portions of my eye. And I'm just going to go up a little bit with it. So this is just going to start building our eye look. This color is very pigmented. Now, from the colors that I used previously, I used, you know, this one and this one. The ones that are, like, not perfectly gray, I also used a little bit of this one for, like, an outer corner moment. These mattes are a little more on the dry side. They are pigmented. I did take a little bit of building up with this shade previously, um, but they are a little on the drier side. The shimmers, however, so far, because I haven't used all of them, have been very pleasant and very nice. I will say that these kind of drier mattes do have a little bit of fallout in the pan, but I don't really care. <laughs> I mean, fallout's fallout and I can just take my powder brush and whoosh it away. Oh, and speaking of fallout, I heard that, you know, like the fallout game series by Bethesda, we don't talk about fall 76, um, but there is going to be a fallout TV series. I want to say they said it's going to be on Paramount, Paramount plus. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. I want another Fallout game. I want co-op playerness, you know, like they had Fallout 76, but actually good. That's what I want, you know? This is supposed to be a like horror themed video with the Ghost Face palette and I'm over here talking about Bethesda video games. <laughs> okay, anyways, here's what I have going on. I just packed that on a little bit. It's a little bit bluey gray, not blended out at all, but I'm gonna take a regular blending brush now. This is the Elizabeth Mott tapered blending brush. It's just a blending brush 
and I'm going to build on top of this a little bit. I'm going to take Halloween icon, which is this one, go a little bit on here as we can, like it's, it's drier, right? So I'm going to have to tip it a little bit more. And I'm just going to blend the edges, deepen up the color a little bit. I'm going to go back in here. This didn't really pick up very well. There we go. I'm just going to blend out. I thought going darker with the second color would give a little bit more dimension to the look. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just blending it in my crease here, kind of connecting it over the center. But again, the center of the lid needs to remain light for this halo. But since we are using a ghost face palette today, what do you guys think is the best scream? You're right, it is the original. <laughs> the original is by far the best one. The worst one is four. The worst one is four. I know people give three a lot of crap, but I think four is the worst one. It was like when that one came out, it was just like they were trying to be like the new era of Scream, even though it was only number four and it really wasn't that distant away from the original one, timeline wise. Um, four is the worst. Okay, here's my crease. It looks okay, right? Like it's not perfect, but none of these looks are gonna be perfect. So I am intrigued here by this shade. It's like blue and then in certain lightings like that, it looks purple. It looks so pretty. So I just wanna swatch it on my hand first. Oh, it's very purple. That's very purple. Let's just see. See, it's very purple. It's purple, it's blue. It's purple, it's blue. Ooh, that's so pretty. I don't know if it's gonna work with this look. Mmm, I don't know. Okay, let's swatch this one is mirror gleam this one pulls more green it looks like so it's like a silvery green kind of shade these are cool okay okay what are we gonna do for the shimmers so for the center i want to use this midnight robe shade which is just like a silvery shade i want that to be the pop and highlight in the center i want something kind of darker on the outer corner but the, like these middle Shades that we just swatched look so pretty. I just don't know if they're gonna work with this look. So let's go. Let's go with Masked Mystery, which is this shade right here. I'm gonna put it on my pinky. It's not as soft as some of those other metallic -y shades we just swatched. And I'm gonna put this on the lid right there on the outer and inner portion, leaving the center blank so we can get that good, that good, good halo. I'm going to take that blending brush again with no extra product just to blend the shimmers and mattes together really lightly because I don't want like a distinct line of like one where stops one where one stops and the other one starts. And now let's do that center halo highlight midnight robe, which oh my god, it's so silvery and pretty. She's going to tip tapity that right in the center. Like I said, my eyes are being very watery today, so I don't want to do a lot of eyeshadow underneath, but I do want to do some just to really pull the look together. If I ruin it by the end of the day, I guess we'll be okay. So I want to go back into Ghostly Gray, which is this more bluey gray here, and tap a little bit of Curfew Hour, which is this one right here with the ghost face imprint in it. Tap off any excess. I want to just take that with the same little stubbier brush I used before and do it under my lower lash line. This is a really good bluish gray combination. I really like this color combination. It really works with the more silvery center of the eye, you know? I just said how I didn't want to do a ton of eyeshadow on the bottom and then I got carried away and this happened. All right, here is the eyeshadow. I'm gonna pop on some lipstick lashes. I'll be right back and I'll show you the finished look. Okay guys, so this is the finished look. What do we think? Honestly, I went for the black lip because I was like, I don't know what else to do with it. <laughs> it's so blue gray that I was like, what else goes with it? I don't know. I guess we're in black lipstick today. So yeah, that's what I did with it. I think the eye look came out very cute. I don't think it's the most like poppin' halo I've ever done for sure because there's a lot of the similar-ish gray tones, but I think it came out very pretty. Um, I mean, just looking at the viewfinder, I think it looks nice. It is a lot of darkness with my black hair and everything. However, it's October, so you know. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I had fun with this. I hope you did too. If you want to see more looks with the ghost face palette, let me know. I can post them as like shorts or on TikTok. I, I think this palette's a little bit past um, 
being like the freshest glam like thing out there so i don't know if it's worth like regular youtube videos but if you want to see more shorts or tiktoks let me know thank you guys so much and i will see you later have a beautiful day and be sure to check out dossie at the top of the description box okay bye guys